The new Skywatcher strain wave mounts have arrived and I was lucky enough to get a demo copy of the Wave 150i to share with you guys here in the backyard. In this video, I'll share my experiences using the Wave 150i for deep sky astrophotography and share who I think would benefit most from a system like this. I have a feeling a lot of EQ6R Pro owners have been patiently waiting to make the leap to strain wave, and now might be a good time. The next generation of astrophotography mounts are here, and they prioritize portability and function over everything else. Here's a look at the setup I'll be using tonight in the backyard, and the plan is to capture the amazing bubble nebula in the constellation Cassiopeia. I decided to use the stocky Skywatcher Esprit 100 refractor tonight because I was told that this telescope will be sold as an optional package deal with the Wave 150i. The Wave mounts have a DV dual saddle design to mount your favorite telescope, and the bolts feel very smooth and secure. I'm using the optional carbon fiber tripod that comes with the wave mounts, along with the pier extension to get some additional clearance and height. At a focal length of 550 millimeters with this telescope, I should be able to capture a nice wide field of view around the bubble nebula and include the nearby Northern Lagoon Nebula. There are two wave mounts, the 100i, that can hold 22 pounds without a counterweight and the 150i that can handle 33 pounds without a counterweight. With the counterweight, the 150i can hold an impressive 55 pounds. The counterweight kit is really nice too. I won't put it on here tonight, but I'll definitely try it out on a larger scope in the future. You can actually unlock the RA and deck clutches on this mount too, which is a handy feature in my opinion. I'm not sure how often you'll have to do this, but I'm happy it's there. You'll definitely wanna make sure those clutches are locked when you're done because that's a lot of unbalanced weight on there. Strain wave mounts are designed for people trying to streamline their astrophotography experience with less overall weight and faster setup times. They can carry an impressive payload without the need for a counterweight and they're a great option for anyone that needs to tear down and set up night after night or that likes to travel to dark sky locations. I've experienced this firsthand with the popular ZWO AM5 mount and now Skywatcher has decided to join the party. While the AM5 and even more portable AM3 have been nothing short of exceptional, it's always nice to have options. There are some key differences between these mounts and the ZWO models, and I'll cover those in detail. While strain wave mounts are incredibly compact and capable, there are some things to consider with a design like this. Without balancing the telescope payload, which still feels wrong to me, you need to be aware of potentially tipping the entire thing over, tripod and all. You can avoid this nightmare scenario by beefing up your tripod or adding weight to the base. I'm told that there will be an adapter available to mount the Wave 150i to your existing EQ6R tripod, which sounds like a good idea to me. I don't know if you noticed that ominous sky behind me, but I got completely clouded out last night. So let's try this again. One of the transitional benefits of going from an EQ6R to the wave mounts is the ability to use your existing SynScan hand controller. If you want to, you simply plug it into the hand controller port and you can use it just like your EQ6R mount. I prefer to use the ASI Air, however. The ASI Air lets me do everything on this wave mount from controlling the mount itself, plate solving, to image capture, auto guiding. Everything I need is done through the ASI Air talking to the wave mount. I wanna clear something up about these strain wave mounts because I know there's some confusion, I've heard it. Although this technology is relatively new to the astronomy market, it doesn't mean that tracking accuracy is improved over a traditional equatorial telescope mount. In fact, they need auto guiding to perform at their best and you're gonna wanna use dithering as well. If you're looking for a mount, you can brag about how long you can shoot unguided for, strain waves are not the one for you. To power the mount, you're gonna to wanna to use a 12 volt, five amp power cable. I've been using this Celestron branded version I picked up on Amazon, and I use the same one for the ASI Air. The mount and the ASI Air need their own power. Remember that. The Wave 150i uses the same EQ mod cable I've used with all of my Skywatcher mounts, and I can control the mount and plate solve with the ASI Air. The Wave mounts have a powered USB hub for better cable management, 
but to power it, you'll need an adapter with a 2.5 millimeter DC cable. The standard 2.1 millimeter I use on the ASI Air would have been nice, but I'm told the 2.5 was chosen for better power throughput. So keep that in mind if you wanna use the powered hub on this mount. This makes me nervous. Yeah, like it's, that's a lot of weight to just be hanging on to a clutch. You're gonna to wanna to make sure these clutches are tight. I don't think I'm gonna loosen these anymore. The wave mounts include this pretty slick red backlit latitude scale. There it is. And even a little red light by the bubble level. So that's a nice touch. You know, I'm a sucker for the red lights. The one thing I found with this latitude scale here is that I know I'm at 43 degrees north, uh, but it looks like I'm closer to 50 based on this scale. So I think it might be a little too tight to be super accurate or it needs calibration or something, but it's a little bit off. I've been using the polar alignment feature of the ASI Air to polar align this wave mount. You're gonna need to use some sort of electronically assisted polar alignment tool as this mount has no internal polar scope to do a manual polar alignment yourself. It's the same with the AM5. I think the reason they did this is to rule out bad polar alignment for errors in your tracking. This way it's foolproof. You're gonna get it dead on. The Altaz adjustment bolts on this mount while you're doing that polar alignment feel really great. They feel smooth and secure and it's just a nice experience. I'm really happy with the hardware that they've chosen for these wave mounts. If I get clouded out again tonight, so help me God, they just cannot get this forecast right. Between the passing clouds, I managed to collect a few hours worth of images with the new wave mount. I took pictures in narrowband using O3 and H-alpha filters to try and create a dynamic looking picture of the bubble nebula in the HOO palette. I was actually able to set up the wave mount again the following night to collect even more narrowband images. And finally, last night, I took some images in good old RGB with a color camera to collect some natural looking stars. That's three nights of testing with this mount. Not bad. I remember to record my guiding graph on night three so you can see the numbers for yourself. Here's a look at my guide graph right now. I am actually shooting this night with the ASI 2600 Duo and I'm shooting the Bubble Nebula in RGB, just broadband, no filter, just to get those star colors. So if you can see the guide graph here, those are good numbers. 0.5 total RMS error. And this is with the Esprit 100 refractor on there. Also keep in mind that this is guiding at 550 millimeters because of that duo auto guider inside the 2600. So it's using, it's working like an off-axis guider and guiding at the native focal length. I'm sure that doesn't hurt, but good looking numbers for sure. As you know, your tracking platform is the most important piece of your entire kit. While there's nothing overly exciting about them, choosing one that is reliable is really important. My first great astrophotography mount was a Skywatcher. And guess what? It still works. The tracking mount is the single most important piece of the entire astrophotography rig. This holds the telescope. I can only hope the Wave Series mounts last as long as my HEQ5. Here's the good and the bad from my early experiences with the mount. First, the bad. I'm sure it says it somewhere in the manual, but if you are not using a counterweight, do not unlock the clutches of the mount with your telescope attached, or at least be careful. Also, the location of the power input is a little bit tight if you're using a straight cable and you have a long dovetail. An angled cable would work a lot better. Lastly, the carbon fiber tripod is great for travel setups, but I am not comfortable using it with a large setup like my William Optics FLT-132. Does it feel, can you feel the weight there? It feels the same. Feels the same? Okay, take your hands off. Feel like it's gonna tip? No. While the telescope is within the maximum payload capacity of the Wave 150i, I would need to use a steel tripod or a pier before I felt comfortable with this telescope on it. Now the good. Like the other strain wave mounts available, they make great grab and go systems. This one seems extra great for visual, especially if you can utilize your hand controller from your existing Skywatcher mount. For the astrophotographers out there, you'll be happy to know that the wave mounts 
connect just as easily to the ASI Air as your GTI and EQ6 mounts. Get an EQ mod cable and make sure you select the Skywatcher AZ GTI slash SynScan Wi-Fi from the dropdown. The tracking accuracy, the guiding, the adjustment bolts to polar align the mount all feel amazing. This mount just feels good to use. Looking at the spec sheet, you'll see that this mount is pretty closely matched to the ZWO AM5 and even closer to the new N version. I think the best way to describe the features and pricing of these two mounts is competitive. So three great nights with the Wave 150i so far, and I'm sure many more to come. I really didn't have to change anything about my image acquisition routine with this mount. It was just way easier to bring it in and out of the garage night after night. My final picture includes all of the images I took with this mount over the course of three nights, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I hope you enjoyed this review, and until next time, clear skies.